Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about disk friction. So disk friction is the friction that exists between a rotating circular surface and the surface it's rotating against. So an example of disk friction is what we would see in this orbital sander. So the sanding disk itself is going to be rotating against the surface which is not rotating. So this occurs whenever we have relative motion. So if one surface is sliding against another, we have the possibility of friction. So another common application beyond our disk sander uh, is a type of bearing. So we have thrust bearings where uh, we have some load force pushing down on a shaft um, and there's rotation. Uh, and if it's either a thrust bearing where the end of the shaft is kind of pushed up against the surface, uh, or if we have a collar, so the shaft is going through a surface, but their collar is preventing it from sliding through the surface. Either of these cases, we're going to have a kind of circular area rotating against a stationary object. So for the surfaces in contact, and this is for the, like the collar, where we have a hollow circular area, uh, the friction is going to be the same in all locations, but the moment exerted by the friction force is not going to be the same. So the friction force is mu k times fn. Uh, if the normal force is evenly spread out in all areas, the friction force on the inside and the outside of this collar is going to be the same. But the moment's not going to be the same because the moment is a force times a distance. And if we go from the center of the shaft, it's further to the outside of the collar than it is to the inside of the collar. All right, so what do we do in this case? Well, we need to sum up all the moments. Uh, and really do a moment integral. So we're going to integrate the moment over the area uh, uh, here. And so we're doing the circular annulus first. Uh, and the moment is going to be force times distance. And the force is going to be mu k times pressure. So rather, if we're integrating over the area, we can't do just force. We need to do force over area. So mu k is our static coefficient of friction. P is the pressure, or the force divided by the area which we're going to assume is even throughout the whole surface. And then R is the radius. So the radius from the center of the shaft out to whatever point we're looking at. We are going to be integrating uh, this from the center point outward uh, because the radius is going to increase. This is going to be a polar uh, integral. Uh, and we're going to bring pieces out of this that are constant. So mu k, we're going to assume that's constant. That comes outside the integral. Uh, the pressure is force over area. So in this case, force is the load force pushing down on this whole thing. Uh, and then the area of a circular annulus in this case is pi r outer squared minus r inner squared. That's just the area of this hollow circular shape. So that's our pressure that came out as well since that's nice and even. Uh, and what's left inside is r times dA. So the rate of change of area as we move from the inside radius to the outside radius is simply going to be the circumference times the rate at which we're moving out, so dr. So the circumference is 2 pi r. Uh, and then we have the r left over in our original integral. So we're going to take this initial value here, uh, take the integral from r inner to r outer of r times 2 pi r dr. And if we do that, clean things up a little bit, simplify, we're going to wind up with the following formula. So all of this stuff up top is derivation. This is the formula that we're going to actually need. So the moment due to friction is going to be 2 thirds times mu k times the load force times r outer cubed minus r inner cubed over r outer squared minus r inner squared. All right. So if we modify this, so what if we set the inner radius in this equation right here to zero? Uh, well, that leaves us with the following equation. So we can easily simplify out the inner radius and get for a solid circular contact area, 2 thirds times mu k times the load force times the radius outer uh, or just the radius of our circle. All right, so these are the moments due to friction uh, in our disk friction scenario. Another instance where we have uh, disk friction is disk breaks. So these are similar in a way, uh, but rather than having something rotating against the stationary surface, we actually kind of have the surface rotating underneath uh, the stationary brake pads in this case. 
Uh, so they're very similar to the circular annulus we had before uh, in that they're basically just a section of a circular annulus. So the shape might not be exact, uh, but we can at least use this for an approximation. So the contact area between the stationary brake, uh, stationary brake pad and the rotating disc uh, is going to be a section of what we had for the collar bearing. Uh, and this decreases the area exerting the friction force. So say I've got maybe 60 degrees, that's one sixth of the uh, entire circular annulus. So we have less area, which is gonna decrease the friction force. But because we have less area, we have more pressure in that area. So because we've only got one sixth of the original area, the pressure within that area is six times higher. So what this, hap what this means in the end uh, is that the two factors actually end up canceling each other out, leading to the same friction force as we had in the original scenario. So a single brake pad on one side is still the same two thirds times mu k times the load force times our outer square or cubed minus our inner cubed over our outer squared minus our inner squared. So there is a this is the theoretical scenario. There are some practical limitations. If we have a brake pad that is too small, uh, it's gonna heat up really quickly and that's gonna change our coefficient of friction. But at least theoretical, theoretically in our ideal scenario, uh, the size of the brake pad angle-wise is not too important, although the uh, radius uh, is. So the further we can move the brake pad out from the center, the better it is gonna be at braking. Uh, also, we wanna acknowledge that brake pads usually come in pairs. So we've got a brake pad on the inside and a brake pad on the outside. So we have twice as much friction. So a set of brake pads is going to exert four thirds mu k F load uh, times this whole piece right here. All right, that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.